So, what do you take from watching two legends fight it out? If you're like me, you're probably trying to figure out what even went wrong with this whole Drake Kendrick beef and why it would even happen in the first place. But what I realized is what's more important is how you can learn from it, and how you can level up. And well, I did. And I have a lot of theories on what really happened, but I'll get to that later. First, we gotta break down who the real enemy is. And we gotta look at why things even went down like this. It's pretty easy though. Just remember the nature of the game and how the farther you climb up the ladder, the more people try to snake you down to their level. Everybody shows their true selves the closer you get to your true potential. But that's only if you play their game. Oh, please help me. I'm awful sorry. You see, Pinocchio, a lie keeps growing and growing until it's as plain as the nose on your face. She's right, Pinocchio. You better come clean. I'll never lie again. What if I told you every single time you lie, your nose will grow big like Pinocchio's? What if I told you every time you lie, something detrimental would happen to your appearance and your image? What if I told you that already happens right now? The image part, not the Pinocchio part. Just look at nature. Snakes shed their skin. Dogs, they get new coats. Women, they wear makeup. Men, grow facial hair. Kardashians, they get lip filler. And apparently, Drake gets a BBL. So who the fuck can we even trust now? I said don't get him! So, who do you think won the Kendrick Lamar Drake beef? That's a hard one still, because realistically... I think Drake won the beef. I think there are two losers in this situation. Realistically, if I'm dick riding, it's Drake. But if you want to be real, it's Kendrick still. So. I don't know if anybody won, but I do think somebody lost. <laughs> That's a good take, actually. It is. It, it really is. But it just went too far. There were some like war crimes committed. If you think of classic rap beef, it's like I said war crime. <laughs> dude, seriously. I don't know. You look on social media, and it's like the people who love Drake still love Drake. People who love Kendrick Lamar still love Kendrick. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, bro. Yeah, 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 like this, like just straight disses. Kendrick won that stuff. So how did this guy lose to this guy? Nobody wants to see someone winning for too long. Even your best days, there's gonna be at least one person that's gonna hate on you. At least one. It was the first time I've ever seen like an assassination on his character. You get me? Like who? Like the like the man, the myth, the legend. But at the same time, I feel like- You ever had someone in your family tell you something really fucked up about another person in your family and you're like, whoa, I did not want to hear that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now I know it. It's like, I'm not involved, but now I have this image of a person I haven't even met. Well, I have a theory. The real reason Drake lost to Kendrick Lamar. I feel like we might've took the biggest loss Toronto because I feel like the Americans think we're punks and I don't like that, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie, he might be right. Toronto's been taking the biggest L. Besides anybody else in this beef, it's, it's Toronto. Like the, the fans don't know what to do right now. And Drake, if you're watching this, like, it feels kind of hopeless. Fuck. Yo. Cheering? Yo. Cheering. Cheering. What are you doing? Why are you out here? You good? Why do, you, why do you have a shovel? It's in the bag. Yo, you good, fam? Why do you have, why do you have a shovel for? Nah. Nah. Okay. It's over. I like Drake because I'm loyal to the soil. Drake is probably the one team in Toronto that actually puts up points. Because at the end of the day, Drake's going to be fine. Once he drops, he's going to sell a million first week. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, he can't really lose. 
We all know Drake can drop a number one whenever he wants. This guy knows the music market. He knows the ethos of what everybody wants to listen to. He can make music that goes viral or popular any day of the week. But that's not what he did. Drake failed because he forgot one very important thing. And that's to never play their game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once upon a time, there was a boy that moved to a new city. The city of Toronto. He was dropped into a new school with new people and new friends. This boy fell in love. He had a crush on a girl in this new school. But since it was new territory, he did everything he could to try and impress her. He looked at what all the popular kids at school were into, how they talked, how they were, and he became one of them. But little did he know, the girl was already in love with him. And when he was ready to show his new self to her, she fell out of love. She fell out of love because he became just another one of the many boys in the school. She fell in love with the real him. She fell in love with who he was before. And if he stayed himself, he would have won her heart. When the whole world is against you, it's easy to be against yourself. So don't make that mistake. So moral of this video that I just really wanted to get my point across was, and everyone's probably wondering, what the fuck does this have to do with Drake? What the fuck does this have to do with the Kendrick beef? Alright, so hear me out. Drake was induced to go full-blown lyrical and surgical with Kendrick, as many of us know Kendrick to be. Kendrick might have even knew this himself too, which is why he probably saved his most viral-worthy, most hypeable song for last, as who knows, maybe this was his secret weapon knowing Drake would try to compete with Kendrick at Kendrick's game. Not to say that both rappers can't out-rap each other, but we both know usually what would happen, Drake would just drop a regular hit and not go too deep into the lyrics and too deep into the storyline and too deep into the disses as we thought Kendrick would probably do. Sometimes the snakes could be ourselves, getting in our own way. But remember, never bite your own tail because that shit will go on forever. Just remember who you are. A rattlesnake doesn't get scared by its own rattle. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body is telling me yeah. So if you didn't get it by now, the snake is you. At least it could be. It's you that gets in your own way. It's you that thinks that you can't do shit. It's you that thinks, oh, everybody's against me on this thing, so I'm gonna move this way and react as this type of person. It's all us. So fucking shed your serpent skin so you're not a snake to yourself. You're the snake to yourself if you don't realize you could be. Drake too, that's the reason he lost. He was his own snake in this situation. He would have won if he just, you know, rapped how he would usually rap. He would make a hit like how he usually makes hits and make songs that don't sound like you're trying to be Kendrick and outsmart him and out rap him in his game. In the same way, in the UFC, sometimes a wrestler will try to go toe to toe with a striker and he'd suffer. Even though he may be the champion and has nothing to prove, the environment may influence him to make him think beating someone in their own territory is the move. When you don't stick to your game plan, when you don't stick to your strengths and you try to fight with your ego, you take the hits that you don't see coming. And Drake, Drake's a hit maker. Kendrick, Kendrick's a lyricist. Bro, the first diss track was push-ups. We all thought was a hit. And that honestly felt the most authentic to his brand. But somewhere along the way, Drake decided to play into Kendrick's game and deal with the beef on Kendrick's terms. He tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the striker. And yes, he got hit with some shit he couldn't see coming. That's why I struggle with a lot is fighting myself. I always find out that, yo, sometimes the reasons I fail is because my own it's literally because of me like let, let's let's throw it all excuses and throw everything away it's my own doing and yeah a lot of people are gonna be like yo you're a little bit hard on yourself this and that no bro like a lot of the times the reasons we don't get things done is just because of us a lot of us want to blame it on other things we want to blame it on other people bro look in the mirror you can see your own faults if you really try to but a lot of the times we don't want to see that There's really only two types of people in the world. It's either you think you're a victim or you think you're the underdog. So just like Beatrix Cadeau and Kill Bill, 
Drake was faced against pretty much the entire rap game. You had rappers that were secretly hiding this whole time, hiding in their hatred until finally they had a chance that they can jump this guy all together and use their hatred together to take away the person that's sitting at what some might say is the throne. Just like how they conspired to kill Julius Caesar. They conspired to take out Drake. It's the same thing, it's the same story, but this time he's still alive and he's still breathing. Obviously Drake lost this beef, like there's no debate about it. But the way I see it right now, Drake has opportunity. The rise to the top is one story. The fall from grace is another. But the rise from destruction is a story only few greats get to tell. So you think you can take on a hundred ninjas? Can you even take on yourself? So who the fuck can we even trust now? First off, can we even trust ourselves? Let's think about this real quick. Can people even trust you? You think so? Let's put that shit to the test then. Put up five fingers and put one finger down every time you're fake. I'll start. Put a finger down if you ever lied to a friend. Put a finger down if you pretended to like something that you didn't actually like. Put a finger down if you dressed a certain way to impress somebody that's not yourself. Put a finger down if you ever told a white lie to protect your friend. You got me? Yes, bro. Are you sure? I pinky promise. Why didn't we just shake hands? Now y'all are probably saying, wait, hold on. White lies, what's wrong with white lies? Can I not say a lie to protect my friend? You can do whatever you want. But if you think about it this way, okay, this is a question for you. Yeah, yeah. If you could be truthful your entire life. You're gonna say, if you could be an animal. No. <laughs> what, what yeah. Wait, what was I gonna say? Yeah, yeah. If you could be, be truthful, truthful your entire life and not lie to anybody, would you do it? Some people would say no. Yeah. If I'm 100% real with you every single day you meet me, yeah. and I say something that's a bit triggering, but it's real, you would understand me. If one day, let's say it was the opposite, I give you a side of me that's fake okay. and then one day i show you my real side which is the triggering side or whatever mm -hmm. it may be not not to say i'm triggering i'm just saying like an example now i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> if i were to and then switch it up then it would be weird then that would yeah. be weird but that would be my true self that i i never show how much of yourself do you really show to your friends how much do you know about yourself to yourself because i feel like we don't even know what we want sometimes so how are we supposed to express that to someone we barely know would you say every time you meet somebody, you're your authentic and true self. Definitely not. No, I don't think so. I don't think so, cause I feel like um, I have a healthy distrust of people. I want to find out who you are before I can show you who I am. When you first meet someone, again, it's first impressions last. Would you say you would like to be able to show your true self and you just can't? Yeah, but not all deception is bad deception. Mm, see. But but I do I do think that like I probably would opt to try to be truthful. Mm -hmm. But I do think that's hard, right? It is hard. Because again, hard. especially if you're someone who cares a lot about other people's feelings. Being yourself with someone for the first time you meet has to be either the love of your life or your fucking soulmate. Yeah, yeah, I'm very authentic. I don't, uh, I don't filter myself too much. It depends. If if I need to be filtered, sure. Mm -hmm. But if not, like I'm not gonna present as someone I'm not because then that has its own slew of problems. That's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I think because that's what I've been debating with a lot of people. Is like. If you, if you play this character of this person that you want to show everyone else, yeah. by the time they really meet who you are and mm -hmm. who you truly are, man, it's already too late. Yeah. And most times it's people will change who they are because they themselves think that the other person isn't acceptable. Mm -hmm. And most times it's not. So it's mm -hmm. like, saves the both of us time if you just tell me who you are off rip. If you're a fucked up person, I'd like to know immediately. I'd like to know that immediately too, right? It's not that I'm gonna like cut you off in an instant. It's like, okay, well maybe there's reasons for this. I think we're all meant to be on earth for a certain purpose. And we're all meant to be on earth to have a certain personality, our true person of who we are. And we're supposed to share that true person to the world. Even if you're scared to, even if it doesn't align with your career, you're supposed to show that side of you because that truly is who you were gifted and blessed to be. 
if you use what you're blessed with and if you use what you're meant to do in life the right way and who you truly are and use your true authentic self to do it you can't really fail because if you do fail then it just wasn't meant to be at all but the moments you try and you become this other thing that you're not and then you face the challenges that's like saying okay god you blessed me with this but i'm gonna pretend to be that to take on this battle because i don't think you blessed me with enough armor with what you've given me so far to take this on and that's always wrong that's not true god blesses you with exactly what you need exactly that moment and even if you lose the battle you're supposed to go through the battle with that armor on or with that mentality or with that character because you're not ready to grow into the next person yet you have to take your l's first so just stop stop trying to be someone else you know just find out who you are aware of what i'm saying and i'm like why try, what no, the no, hell I'm, I'm like trying to make sure that it's like cohesive because i'm like i don't want him to like edit too many like takes me just being look, like silent pause the like, point the that, point of this thing. i'm leaving all of this in the point of this is <laughs> to be authentic that's the, that's the point of this type of podcast because jumpers jump is a whole different story mm. if i'm doing jumpers jump shit like See, i'm not used to I'll this world it, yeah. of like unscripted like i do appreciate unscripted unscripted stuff because i feel like Again, like things happen in it that you're just like, oh shit, I wouldn't have been able to come up with that. There's like the serendipity piece. Yeah. But I feel like it makes editing way harder. But again, if you don't edit it because it's a podcast and you just leave it in, then I can see how there's a lot of value in it because just like really raw. You said you're not used to this world of unscripted. Miley, life is unscripted. Yes. But I feel like um, whenever you bring a camera into the equation, people naturally change a little bit as much as they don't want to like okay if you're used to it for you you've been doing this for like four years right True. i feel like for you it's like not different mm -hmm. but for like the majority like if we were to pull someone off the street right now they would probably act different on camera depends though i feel i feel mm. some people especially torontonians whenever they're on the news and stuff like but you would never know because you don't know what their day-to-day -day life looks like you only see them on you like, only see them in that, that moment yeah so it's like they could be really different but you wouldn't know that's a good point too mm. i guess but i don't know i think because i think about it this way right you on camera is just you yeah. on camera yeah but it's still you so it's you in that real life scenario because being in front of a camera is a real life scenario but think about it this way it's like okay you're out with friends right mm -hmm. you're with friends and suddenly you bring your camera out People are not going to act the same way, necessarily. Like, they might oh, feel a little okay. bit more hesitant. I don't know. I, that's what I've noticed. Is like, right. it like, it's like, a, there's, there's like a third eye watching you or something. And so nah. it makes you feel more, like, suddenly it's like, I don't want to say scripted, but suddenly it's like, it feels more forced. It's supposed to be something? No, it's not no. supposed to. It's not supposed to, but it that's does. That's what forced is. Forced but, but, is that's, but that's what it becomes okay i see yeah because i think about it this way look let's say um i make you say something in front of your mom yeah you saying something in front of your uh, your mom is gonna be different than you saying it in front of like a friend yeah right yeah but that's still you speaking in yeah, front yeah. of something that's yeah. a real moment you're but still exactly, different than that person real camera moment could be that's, different that's than still real, real no <laughs> no that's just real no so them in front of the camera at that moment is just real because that's authentic what would be fake would be them already training to be on camera and then presenting themselves that's actually fake you never thought about it like that huh the more you feed yourself lies and the more you try to become someone you're not you hold yourself back from becoming the person you're meant to be and usually the person you're meant to be is the person you're blessed to be now it's never too late though it just takes maturing it just takes realizing what's true to you it takes saying fuck all of the influence fuck everybody else that's telling me to do something else with my life and just doing what you feel is right for you against all odds against a hundred people against a thousand people it doesn't matter once you have faith in yourself and you know you're on the right path for what you want to do nothing can stop you just like beatrix kiddo and kilbo they'll go through a thousand ninjas and they still can't stop you so have faith have faith in yourself and have faith in god and honestly having faith in yourself means having faith in god because god created you and you should have faith that god created something so great within you that you can take on anything you dream because it's the truth nobody can stop you it's just yourself and that's what the biggest point of this video is a lot of the times the biggest snakes in our lives and the biggest enemy 
it's just us it's our own self-doubt it's us stopping us from being great and the moment you realize that is the moment you start to kill those snakes and instead of shedding your skin and becoming a new serpent every time you're in a different room with different people you'll stay true to who you are you'll kill that snake and you'll be who you're blessed to be it takes time though i didn't realize that until i was a little bit older but i'd be so grateful if somebody would have taught me these lessons a bit earlier and that's for y'all so if you made it this far in the video i just want to say thank you so much for supporting thank you so much for watching hope you guys had a great time watching it i'm gonna be doing a lot more creative videos like this leave a like comment subscribe all that good stuff leave a great comment and i want to hear your thoughts on the video opinions or even just what you guys want to see next for my channel thank you so much catch you guys in the next video cash out later